excuse me, Kathleen Weinhut. Thank you for joining with us. My honor. I represent a thousand members of the Ho Chunk Nation, so I, I begin by bringing their greetings. So, Pinagigi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Dennis White, who isn't, who isn't with us right now, but it was here earlier and spoke with us, said some things happen in our lives that changes us forever. And I'm gonna tell you about something that happened that changed my life and Senator Jones' life and my 12 other colleagues in the Senate forever. I took a call at six in the morning from Senator Mark Miller who suggested that I not go to the Capitol because he said, you're gonna be assigned a state patrol officer and he's gonna follow you. Three hours later, I was driving south, intent on making the Illinois border before the gavel fell, opening that Senate session. And as I drove south, leaving my beloved state behind, I had this overwhelming feeling of freedom. I had agonized over the last four days about how to stop this bill. I was prepared, we were all prepared to go to the floor to debate the bill, to amend it, to delay it, but in the end, we knew that it was gonna pass. We didn't have the power if we went to the Senate floor to stop the bill, but we did have the power to stop the process. Power that was given to us in the Wisconsin State Constitution. And at that moment, it was more powerful to not vote than to vote. And our action of not voting gave people time to communicate, to organize, and to claim their own power, not just in Wisconsin, but all across this great nation. We accomplished our goal by slowing down the process to let the public know what was really happening and what the governor was trying to accomplish. And the governor said that all of this had to happen because there was a fiscal crisis. But our legislative fiscal bureau said there was no fiscal crisis at that time. But there is a fiscal crisis right now. And the legislature just adjourned without the governor putting forth a bill to repair the fiscal crisis. Now we've heard a great deal about how the governor balanced a $3.5 billion deficit. What we don't hear is that the governor, every governor, is required to submit a balanced budget. And two years prior, the Democrats and Governor Doyle faced, it appears Governor Walker's deficit, a deficit twice as big, and it was balanced. And that deficit that the governor talked about was based in part on the demands of his own agencies. And when I think about the details of this, I remember seeing recently a fundraising letter of the governor that says our debts and our deficits are gone. And then he said, I am all about doing what's right for Wisconsin's future. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now the current governor says that he's eliminated the debt and the deficit, but I have a little secret to tell you that no one knows the debt, the mortgage that's due has actually gotten bigger. And you know why? Because Governor Walker has not paid bills coming due in the budget. In fact, Walker proposed putting off paying more debt than any other governor in the history of Wisconsin. Now, the legislative, the, the Wisconsin Budget Committee, the Finance Committee, decided that they didn't want to do that, go there, and they wrote down some of that debt, but in the end, $500 million in debt payments. Payments coming due, just like your mortgage, payments coming due were not paid. 
and we had to pay, because you know, if you don't pay your credit card bill or you don't pay your mortgage, you pay more in interest, and all of us had to pay more. Now the governor says that this recall effort is orchestrated by big union bosses and out of state money. And I think maybe he needs to spend more time in Wisconsin than in Florida, New York, Missouri, and Texas, raising big out of state money. to our campaign from a fella in Dundee, Illinois, who told me that he and his three friends are more left than Teddy Kennedy and just about fell off their bar stools when they opened letters and shared letters from Governor Walker. Remember, this is Dundee, Illinois. They, they shared letters from Governor Walker asking for out-of-state contributions from them. <laughs> now, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, Wisconsin is experiencing a renaissance in democracy, and I see it every day in our campaign. Thousands of volunteers are coming together across the state, canvassing their neighborhoods, calling and writing their friends, painting their own yard signs. And I wish I had a really big copy of this, but yesterday I had an artist that even painted our own campaign art which says, a fresh start for Wisconsin. And the cow, and you'll know I'm a dairy farmer, is holding a flag that says, utterly effective with D. <laughs> so soon, this is at the printer, but soon it will be available for a, a, a small contribution to our campaign for you to hang in your living room. <laughs> because there's no big out of state donors in my campaign. It's all about grassroots Wisconsin. And I don't mind being known as the campaign with the artists that's on a shoestring budget. Because we have something more, far more powerful at work. And that is the power of the people. It was 14 ordinary citizens that performed a brilliant defensive strategy, the Wisconsin 14, right back there. Look at her sign. <laughs> now, Senator Dow told you a little bit about what happened when, he, when, when we left the state. We didn't stay at a fancy hotel in Rockford. Instead, we stayed at my sister's house and her husband in Woodstock. And the guy across the street that took a week to figure out that the, all of those Wisconsin license plates in the driveway really were the Wisconsin 14, spent a whole week watching us went through a telescope. <laughs> now, my brother-in-law went shopping for a lot of my colleagues. And he spent a lot of time buying a lot of different sizes of men's underwear. <laughs> and there were women, myself included, who left our children at home. And Senator Miller, whose wife got on a plane after she started a crock pot that morning, hoping her husband would be home for dinner, knowing it would be a long day, and realized when she got to Chicago and she saw on the television that her husband was on his way to Illinois, that she had to somehow get that crockpot turned off. <laughs> it was another three weeks before her husband, Senator Miller, came home. <laughs> now, some senators didn't have their essential medication, and other senators, including myself, left our phone chargers in, in, in back at home which means, you know, think about these days, you can't do anything without a phone charger. I think we had to go through three batteries a day. We were talking to so many people. But in response to the Wisconsin 14, thousands, another thousands of ordinary citizens showed up from all over the state at the Capitol to, to protest the actions of our government. And they shouted, this is what democracy looks like. And they joined hands and sang, we shall overcome. Thousands of ordinary people all across the state collected signature, signatures. And now there are millions of Wisconsinites who have gardening and spring cleaning to do. And we all know the biggest spring cleaning job 
is in the governor's mansion. <laughs> because there's a lot of cleaning up to do. <laughs> because all those millions of ordinary citizens who are going to do that spring cleaning, they're going to get out their mops and their pails, and we're going to start sweeping, and we are not going to stop sweeping until we sweep this governor out of office. Yes. <laughs> Wanted to come and save us are right here. They are right among us. The legendary box carriers. Does anyone know of a legendary box carrier? There are a few. Well, I brought this sign with me. And this sign was given, actually, it was sold to me by the Pepin County Democrats that wanted to raise money. <laughs> so that's an idea, you know, you want to make money here, raise Sawyer County Democrats, get all those signs and start selling them. <laughs> this is a story of cooperation. This, this sign was made in Eau Claire. It was used by the Pepin Democrats. And when the Buffalo County Democrats called for help because they needed help, the Pepin County Democrats said, don't worry, we will bring you the card table and the sign and a person to help you and a clipboard. <laughs> That's what Wisconsin cooperation is all about. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're all about. And then we have to stop. Then we have to sell it to raise money for the party. I, another hero, I want to, so, so the hero here is Luann Roby. She's the hero from Buffalo County. A hero from Black River Falls was Sheila Danielson, who I was with this morning at the 3rd Congressional District in Alma Center. She shared with us what it was like to be one of those legendary box carriers and the tremendous responsibility she felt. And remember, the legendary box carriers are the, are the people who lifted the box out of the U-Haul truck, the box of petitions, and carried it up to the Government Accountability Board. And Sheila said when she picked up this box, it was very heavy. And in it, she said with tears streaming down her face, were, was the pain of losing a job, the heartbreak of a home in foreclosure, the fear of losing a child's health insurance. But as I walked, she said, I heard the cheers, and I saw the people lined up from all over the state, and the box became lighter, and she felt inside the hopes and the dreams and the dedication and the respect from people all over this state. And she said, by the time I got to the stop of the stairs at the Government Accountability Board, my box was as light as a feather. <laughs> The world saw the fruits of our labor when those petitions were delivered. And I think the man that first stood on the floor of the Wisconsin legislature and first talked about the idea of a recall, Governor Bob LaFalle, would indeed be most proud. We will demonstrate clearly what Go Governor LaFalle said. The cure for the ills of democracy is more democracy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are the people we've been waiting for. We are the change we want to see. And now, as Clint Eastwood said in the commercial during the Super Bowl, it's halftime. <laughs> we played a magnificent first half. We began with a brilliant strategy by the Wisconsin 14, leaving the state and the protesters arriving in force. It was an amazing defensive strategy. But now, we must turn defense to offense. We need a new governor. <laughs> yes! <laughs> A fresh 
start, which is all about what my poster here is, a fresh start for Wisconsin with the cow. <laughs> we heard the song today from the Bear Clan, from my adopted tribe, the Ho-Chunk Nation. And Councilman Rusty Barber told us about what the song was about. He said it was a healing song. We need that healing. We need to heal the divisions among us. And we need to respect each other while we debate our differences, because our differences are not going to go away. But we must stop pitting business against labor as though they were enemies. And stop driving a wedge between the public sector and the private sector. We are all suffering. We are all in this together. And we all need everyone's best effort to create the kind of great communities that we want to live in and work in and raise a family. And none of us will succeed unless we all move forward together. We need a fresh start in Wisconsin government and politics. Take a deep breath with me and imagine what that looks like. We need a leader who will respect Wisconsin's traditions of openness, good government, full participation, and following the rules. I wrote a bill, actually I wrote two of them, to require the legislature to follow the open meetings laws. Of course, like most of the rest of the Senate Democrats bills, the Republicans never gave the bill a hearing. But the, as the leader of the state, I will follow the rules that every other unit of government has to follow. I will uncover those black boxes that have been created by this governor, like the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation that used to be the Department of Commerce. The dark dealings will be made transparent. We will let the sun shine in on contracts with open bidding, contractors who, do, who deliver quality products on time, meeting or exceeding expectations, and legislation that we can actually see before it passes. Legislation is like... <laughs> legislation is like fish. You need to open up the package, sit it on the kitchen table, and let the light sh and the sun shine on it and see if it smells. <laughs> Which is what Bob Joe did to that mining bill, and you would be most surprised if you started to read that bill, the original bill. Now, we need a leader who listens to the people and does the will of the people. And everywhere I hear, the will of the people is a fairly funded public education system focusing on the needs of our children that respects and honors our professional educators. And the will of the people is affordable health care for all. jobs earlier and when I talk to people especially small businesses they tell me that one of the biggest barriers to creating jobs is affordable health care for small businesses and I've written a bill to address those problems I've actually spent the last three years working on the will of the people is a Wisconsin economy that moves us into the 21st century with broadband high-speed rail Alternative energy, including my favorite, my favorite from cow country, manure digesters. <laughs> and the will of the people is respect for our environment. As my Native American friends say, unto the seventh generation. I heard. John Grindier, the president of the Ho-Chunk Nation, and, and my adopted constituent, give a magnificent speech just last week at the State, at State of the Tribes. And he said, Native American people speak differently. If you listen to their voices, 
because they say something that speaks of those who came before us and those who are yet to be born. And Mike Wiggins talked about 300 to 400 years. Can you imagine if in the Wisconsin legislature, on every desk and on the governor's desk, three, what will happen in three or 400 years? We can't even think beyond the next 18 months, ladies and gentlemen. We need a leader who thinks onto the seventh generation. We need a leader who governs with self-restraint. We need a leader who will be truthful about her intentions. I will be that kind of leader. Often I am asked about Madison and the environment in which I work. And my people I represent in Western Wisconsin say to me, Kathleen, can't you change what's those people in Madison? And I say to them, I can only change one, and that is myself. But I so believe and live my life by the saying of Gandhi, be the change you want to see. Be the change you want to see. Now, Wisconsin needs a fresh start in Wisconsin government and politics. And we can be that change. So tonight I challenge you. If you don't like money in politics, be the change you want to see and work for the candidate with less money. <laughs> if you don't like scripted sound bites, work for the candidate who respects your intelligence. If you don't like negative campaigning, work for the candidate that talks solutions and doesn't talk trash. And if you don't like politics as usual, work for the unusual. <laughs> now right now we are trying to win a game when our opponents have tried to rewrite all of the rules. They changed the voting laws, but as Paul said, they, <laughs> that was declared unconstitutional. They changed the lines in the legislative districts, but right now they have to fix some of those lines in Milwaukee. And they changed the laws related to campaign finance in the Citizens United decision. But they haven't changed the most important rule, and that is one person, one vote. And when we turn out in numbers not seen before, we have the power of the people. Just like the Wisconsin 14, we must all muster that courage and determination to take a bold step that will open the eyes of our brothers and sisters to what is really happening. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a very important task in front of us. We must educate, we must motivate, and we must help our brothers and sisters help us change our state. Wisconsin is ground zero. We are fighting for all the marbles and our opponents are playing for keeps but we will show the world we are awake, we are engaged, we are fighting for our democracy, our future. Because when we become the change we want to see, our community changes, our state changes, and we change. And all it takes is one person at a time saying, I will be that change I want to see, starting right now right here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I, I'm going to take two questions. If anybody has any questions? Great fear, and all for I've been a county party chair for seven years, and all through the time when we looked at at Bush Gore and then the Kerry race, I 
it, it is a great fear. All the problems that happen in Waukesha County, I, I think what we need to do is get out more people than they can steal on the other side. And because at this point, we can't control what's happening in a lot of these counties. They are local people and, and there are a lot of questions about vote in, in the integrity of our election process. I, I am concerned about that and I share your concern. We have seen though the overturning of the voter, what I call the voter suppression law that we fought a long, long time to try and stop on the Senate floor and of course we couldn't stop it. With that, opens the door for a, a lot easier voting for a lot of people. So I just voted, I'm voting absentee, and I just voted at, at the, and when you vote out in the country, you'll know that if you vote absentee, I go to the to my clerk's kitchen table, and we sit there and talk, and then I vote, and you give her the, give her the envelope, and then we sit and talk some more, and that's just kind of how we do it in the country. But I didn't have to show my ID. So the, the law, the, the voting law in all of its pieces, the, the voting and photo ID law in all of its pieces has been declared unconstitutional, which means that the residency law and a lot of those different changes are not in effect right now. And the other thing people forget is that you can still in Wisconsin register on the same day you go to vote. So a lot of this needs, we need to communicate to people but like I said in my speech, it's imperative that we get everybody to the polls. I think this election is gonna be about communicating to people that there is an election, especially out here in Western Wisconsin. When I was collecting recall signatures in Eau Claire, I knocked at people's doors that didn't know that they had even changed the voting laws. That's how little the news gets out to Western and Northern Wisconsin about what's happened. So we must get everybody to the polls. It's extremely important. Thank you for your question. We have one more question? All right, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody's attention tonight. And do go visit my website, KathleenVinehout.org, and do sign up for our newsletter, which we send out every week, and there's a sign-up sheet right outside. Thank you very much.